We rolling? We're rolling. Let's roll. Okay, let's We're roll. rolling. Let's roll. But this is how we roll in the Shire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, oh my gosh. Here we are again. What is this? Number four. 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 It's hard wow. to keep count, but yes, number four. Go, friends. Happy hour. Woohoo. Yes. Cheers, I'm, ladies. I'm Monica. I'm Ashley. And I'm Melanie. And, and we got a guest today. Guest today, very special guest. Hello, hello. This is Joanna. Joanna, Yay, Joanna. welcome Joanna to the podcast. Yes, thank lounge. you for joining us. I Feel free to so smoke. Excited to be here. Thanks, thank you, you guys. Good. Well, we invited Joanna because first of all, she's fucking awesome. Awesome. She is. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she's super cool. Um, and also, we we are going to a, a fun event this weekend. Joanna's coming, and we can talk about that coming up but first let's talk about our cocktail of the day okay yes all right okay yeah so today we are going to be talking about true crime and some really cool stuff really cool stuff like that yeah uh, I thought whiskey would be appropriate <gasps> yes oh yes so I have poured everyone a whiskey and ginger ale so I don't know if you've combo. ever had it. Um, it's a nice, it, it's nice and refreshing and it's just kind of a cool flavor. Okay. And I just thought that would be a lot of fun. So everyone, mm-hmm. let's do a cheers. Okay. Cheers. 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 All right. <laughs> so yeah, if you're just tuning in, pull up to the bar. We got a seat. This is going to be a great one. Save just for you. Ta-da. All right. So Joanna. Tell us a little bit about like we're again we're talking about true crime today and I know you and yes. Ashley have been true crime partners in crime oh, for a long time. That it couldn't be further from the truth. And I think every <laughs> time that I watch true crime, read about it, which is pretty much constantly, mm-hmm. um I think my boyfriend thinks I'm going to murder him. Oh. <laughs> Pretty positive. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice to have Don't up the life insurance because that's always the first sign. <laughs> so, uh, Keeps him on his toes. Yeah. <laughs> Marriage is in the cards. And I've been saying, I'm like, we should definitely get life insurance policies. And yeah. Every time. Instant side eye. Every time. <laughs> well, like, well, yeah. you know, got to be prepared. <laughs> you never know. That's true. You never know when they'll, I don't know, fall down the basement stairs. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Be murdered by an icicle falling off the house? Um, yeah. Funny story. Joanna and I, um, along with our friend Emily, lived together for a couple years. And when we first moved in, we didn't have much. We were still in the process of moving. But we had this tiny little couch and a TV and a little coffee table. And the only things we had on the coffee table and to watch on the TV was a uh, terrible John Wayne Gacy movie <laughs> that had the uh, guy from Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure in it. Francis. Francis. Oh. Francis. <laughs> and uh, he was he was playing the lead role of John Wayne Gacy. Oh, and then we also had this, uh, I want to say it was like, I don't know if it was like A&E or it was some History Channel like um, serial killer documentary box set that I owned that was... I think that was your Christmas present from me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's right. She's right. So it was literally like from Ungrateful like Jack bitch. the Ripper. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was like from Jack the Ripper all the way up to, I don't remember what the, the, the most current serial killer was but um mm-hmm. and that's all we had and we had people like helping us move and that's and they all they saw was that we had serial killer documentaries <laughs> and uh and movies on our coffee table and like well yeah. this pretty much sums us up so and friends are like um yeah we gotta get going now mm-hmm. backing out of your house yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks for helping us bye <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's our friendship in a nutshell too i mean every time we get together we uh we were like, what do you want to do? Uh, let's watch uh, Dateline. Let's watch. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anything on Investigation Discovery. Just got cable. Got suckered into that with a <laughs> buy one, get one deal from AT&T. Thank you, AT&T, for that. Um, <laughs> good good sales yeah, people. But no, it's been, it's been a blast. And it really is, like when I really think about it, my number one interest. Other than making crafts. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that would Switch be a toss-up. Serial killers, mm-hmm. crafts. Well, I think I might have co- to go with serial killers. That. Yeah. Yes, a crafty making serial killer. Joanna, what what do you love to craft? What's your favorite craft? Um, I love wood, and that <laughs> yeah. is my favorite. Don't, don't, don't we all? all? <laughs> Yeah, I like to do a lot of woodworking. I sew. <laughs> Thanks, Mom, for that one. Wow. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, just some kind of cutting boards, bar mm-hmm. signs, bar bottle openers, you know, the mm-hmm. whole shebang. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Her work is awesome. Yes. It's great. Oh, it's wonderful. yeah. Yeah. When I make an Etsy site, 
I'll promote it at one point. Oh, okay. absolutely. <laughs> oh, we are all over yes, that absolutely. for sure. Oh my gosh. Is that in the in the plans for eventually? You? So when you quit your full time job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um so speaking of buy one get one deal at AT and T, got a new phone, new phone number, had business cards for the woodworking that I do. Yeah, they not sufficient anymore. My phone number changed. Oh. So, yeah, those will be um, in the works here yeah. at some point. You can get you can get some really cheap business cards at like what Vista Print. Yeah, that's what I think yeah. I did. Yeah. Like five hundred yeah. for ten bucks. Yeah. I got wood trademarking that now. Oh <laughs> yeah, nobody steal that. Nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's a good one. I'll get you. That is a good one. So yeah, it's bizarre how all of us like we've been sitting in here before we started the podcast all talking about. Well, this is a crime that I know of and I've heard about. Where how many people did they murder? I'm not sure. Let's look. Let's yeah. look. So Let's kind see of, of taking Googling over the room here on. for a while. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, we should. I mean, we should talk about or we can talk about how um, how we all get into podcasts. I mean, we all. Mm -hmm. We all started from different different areas, different interests. Yep. But I think like a lot of it stemmed from true crime, at least for me personally, um, whether it was I, I did start with a lot of movie things because I love movies. But most of my interests, most of my podcasts that I subscribe to now are true crime podcasts. So we should talk about what our what our favorite podcasts mm. are. What, what, what yes. got us into podcasts? Yeah. Well, I didn't start until. Well, here's the thing. I thought a podcast was basically what you went to to learn like business strategies and you know things about my 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 business right I'm an I'm an entrepreneur self-employed and and I have a have a business and I thought that's what a podcast was it's just basically a training mm -hmm. thing you listen to yeah. and then last year uh I saw actually I think I mean you had talked about things a little bit Ashley mm -hmm. and and then you had posted, you had shared an article from Rolling Stone. Yes. About one of all of our favorite podcasts now, My Favorite Murder. Oh, <laughs> we bow to the greatness <laughs> of Karen yeah. in Georgia. And I think you may have even mentioned it before, but so you shared that article. So I'm like, well, I'm going to, what, where do I find a podcast? So I actually yeah. had to be like, well, what, what is it? Where do I find it? Where do I go? Mm -hmm. So I found the podcast and I, I said, where do I start? And you were like, just jump in and start anywhere. And you guys did. There was one episode you both told <sighs> Which me. Which one was? Was it John Bonet? It was the. No, um, it was the. um. Oh, what's her name? It's Marie Claire. Nope. It's the. Uh, it's the arm. The, the arm uh, lady. Oh, my God. The badass arm um, lady. The I survived. Yes. yes. Oh, shit. What is her name? Me. Mary Vincent. There Mary you. Vincent. There you go. <laughs> the badass Mary Vincent. Yes. And I think we both said, because I, yeah, I was really into them and I was getting into it and you mm -hmm. were like looking for something to listen to yeah. to fill your time. And I was like, listen yes. to this. Yeah. And yeah, Joanna mentioned Mary Vincent. Yes. Oh my gosh. So awesome. Like, ugh, I just can't even imagine. Her I Survive story is just like the greatest story oh. of all time. Have you guys ever watched interviews with her yes. or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Just, Amazing. Yeah. And then Melanie was telling me about it, got me hooked. And I'm like, well, which one do I listen to first? She goes, try my favorite murders. And I am obsessed <laughs> with that one now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's my goal to get at least once a week one more person listening to that podcast because mm -hmm. it's just... My, some of them are just mind blowing and it's it's interesting and it's fun and that's the kind of thing I like yeah. mm -hmm. and you don't really want to bring it up in polite society oh. so what do you do well I love listening to murders <laughs> um, so yeah and then to find a circle of other people that are just kind of on the edge like we are mm -hmm. very nice um, yeah, I can't count the number of times where I'll be cracking up in my cube, like trying not to bother my coworkers. Yeah. and then they'll kind of pop their head over like are you listening to stand up I'm like not exactly. Not so much. <laughs> Not exactly. Not exactly. More of a laying <laughs> down. You know, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Buried in the ground Relaxing. kind of thing. Yep. No shame. Oh, I thought you were talking about the way Georgia oh. lays on the couch. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. That's so yeah. funny. So we, yeah, we, um, I mean, I just really, my actual first podcast that I ever listened to, and I'll, I'll do a little shout out to them, but um, uh, Leah and her husband, and they, they did a, a movie, a movie podcast that I would start. I started into and then I started googling like what what other podcasts are out there because I really hadn't gotten into them before I never yeah. really l started listening I was always just like listening to music at work mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden all these true true crime podcasts popped up to me I started listening to Sword and Scale and um, eventually I got to My Favorite Murder and then I started listening to True Crime Garage and now I've just kind of branched out and I'm just really 
really trying to find just any anything that like you know subscribe to anybody's anybody's like podcast as long help as them out yeah and once they have your interest it's like yes mm-hmm. it's hard yeah so mm-hmm. yeah um so kind of off topic but have you guys ever listened to the sleep with me podcast i know that they've talked about it on my favorite yes. murder before um game changer like because sometimes it's hard for me to turn off at night you know and yeah yeah it's pretty awesome and i think about it in the same sense where i'm like I wish I could just talk people to sleep and that be my job. Right. That would be awesome. That's interesting. Well, my yeah. husband says I already do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Bazinga>. <laughs> winner, winner. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, and I, I love listening to all different kinds. Just jumping yeah. around and and uh and it's funny, I was telling Monica earlier the um NPR podca- podcast, uh wait, wait, don't tell me. I love that one. I just think it's fun and it's just fun to listen to in the background even it's trivia and it's kind of fast paced and and I really like that and we used to listen to it in the car I had no idea it was a podcast right before I knew what a podcast was I Mm -hmm. thought we were listening to a radio show yeah I don't know you know whatever he pulled it up while we were on drives and stuff and um so in in listening to different ones you know starting with like my favorite murder um from Ashley and Joanna's suggestion I, I was jumping around and I realized, you know, there's not a lot of women hosted podcasts that I want to listen to. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of them are just maybe a little too loud, a little yeah. bit too crazy. And I just I want to hear women talking, having fun together, talking mm-hmm. about serious subjects and fun subjects. Yep. And yeah. and that's kind of what started me thinking um, and, and Monica and I were having a really fun day one time and I started telling her about mm-hmm. this and I and we both, I think we both, maybe I said it first yeah. and I was like, we should we gotta do, do this. We got to do it. <laughs> yeah. And she's totally on board. That was the day we were hunting down to see if anyone could, had rescued Joyce. Yes, her I lost cat my, had, I lost my cat. Her cat was lost. And yeah. so we're driving all over town to different, you know, the Humane Society and everything. Sure, like, her. That was a so fun we day. were, <laughs> we never were, found the cat, but. I was going to say time out. You know, oh, no yeah, Joyce. yeah. Oh, we, no Joyce. we had an original title for our podcast yep. and it has evolved. But that's when I said, you know, Ashley for sure. And, and so we, we just, it kind of rolled just, from there. It just, yeah. it just, it just felt right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and it's like, exactly. I felt like, you know, it's one of those moments in life where all of a sudden you feel like there's signs turning you to this way, go this way. And it's like, okay, this feels right. Mm-hmm. So, so excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, and we're already to episode four already. I know. Yeah, seems Jeez. crazy. I finally got you guys to start coming to my house. <laughs> the podcast, the podcast lounge. lounge yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you like it yeah. or is it? How do you like this rug? Um, that's the first thing I said. <laughs> yeah, the rug is the best. Is I said, wow, this yeah. is some squishy carpet. It's, it's nice. exactly it's a nice rug. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we um so. My favorite murder again is is one of our favorite podcasts, yes. and they're doing you know they're on tour, mm-hmm. and we have tickets to go Yay! check them out. Yay! Yay! Uh, backstage meet and greet oh. passes, VIP, and mm-hmm. I am just sweating thinking about it, yeah. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what we're here. We're brainstorming because yeah. we have a really cool gift that yep. we're going to bring to Karen and Georgia. Mm-hmm. So I can't wait for them to. Yeah. see that so we were doing a little brainstorming yep. session on putting things together for that we've put a lot of thought into this yes oh a whole lot of thought yep. and we're taking joanna's talents yep. and we're exploiting them for our own for benefit. Our own <laughs> so thank you it's definitely a team effort yeah guys. it's no problem at all i am happy to do it i yeah. i've always just been enthralled with the talent you show with your yes. woodworking. yeah it's, it's very cool it's amazing yeah, it's so nice Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we bought our house last year, and ever since mm-hmm. it's been kind of like on the back burner. But Nate, for my B day, made like a workshop in the back, and I <gasps> oh. also I was like, this is like a Dexter kill room. <laughs> this is pretty oh, awesome. Oh, yes. that is Perfect. awesome. <laughs> the plastic <laughs> sheeting everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Just put the drywall up. So yeah, just need some plastic sheets and some staples, and good to go. Good to go. <laughs> All good. Exactly. Well, yeah, let us exciting. know. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. definitely will. <laughs> Keep us can't updated. Wait to visit. You know, can't wait for that one. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> well, I guess I don't have to worry. I'm not like a murderer or anything. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll You're be good there. Oh, you're on the yeah. good list. <laughs> oh, man. Well, so, yeah. So that's kind of how we led into this episode being about true crime, which, I mean, there's, we were specifically talking about Michigan true crime. Because there is. Yeah. And then the more, we're like, well, let's see if we can get five. And then it's like, 
All right, 10. All right. Good God, there have been a lot of murders in yeah, Michigan yeah. all over. No kidding. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Well, the beheading one you guys just mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, right nearby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How have I never known that? I had never heard yeah. about that. Uh, that's oh, how crazy. I feel. Then you mentioned another crime. I'm like, how do I not know that one? Yeah, it's crazy. I know. It's, um, yeah, murders are everywhere. I mean, sadly, that's why we sadly. haven't heard of it because mm-hmm. we hear about it all the time. It yeah. just kind of skips over our radar. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. What are... What kind of draws you to murders as far as um, some of the shows you watch or the documentaries? Do you like mm-hmm. the, um, what do I want to say, uh, like the I survived ones yeah. or? I like survivor stories. I do too. You know, I think that they're so like. I am super emotional. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> Crying it's at just, commercials. Uh huh. Ab- oh yeah. my gosh. What? Oh, the Amazon commercial the other day. Have you guys seen it with the baby? With the dog and, and the, the lion? lion? Yes. Oh my gosh. Every time oh, I'm yeah, like, right. I tell Nate, I'm like, my nose yes. is tingling. I, I know. Feel it. I can yeah. feel it. She but, likes um, the dog now that it's alive. I know. It's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, but it's that's very the sweet. thing where it's like sometimes survivor stories are just a little too much for me. Like mm-hmm. I love them, mm-hmm. but. I don't know, man. But I like serial killers, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm fascinated with, like, serial killers. Just, like, from a historical standpoint, like, H.H. Holmes. um, I don't know if you ever read or thought about reading Devil in the White City. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also reading that. I know. I feel like every episode I'm like, I've started reading this, but I clearly haven't finished any of the books I started reading. You've got, like, 15 books. Yeah. But I started reading Devil in the White City. And just, like, a historical standpoint, just reading about these, like, I mean, now, obviously, like, forensic science is a lot more developed, and we can... Yes. I mean, not that we solve every crime. Obviously, we don't. But, like, back then, it's like... I mean, they could do anything, and there's yeah. just no way we could... Yeah. Like, I mean, Jack the Ripper, we're probably never... We're never going to find out who... Yeah. Was yeah. Murder, mm-hmm. a murderer before, like, 1975, you're good to go. You're good to go. You're good to go. Yeah. You're in the clear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And I don't... I mean, me... It's probably, like, the unsolved mysteries aspect of it that I, like... Um, I just have always liked like conspiracy theories and probably some from my X-Files, like, you know, mm-hmm. fascination, yeah. but like anything that's like unsolved or things that are just like what happened, we don't know, let's investigate. Always fascinating to me. So, yeah. so that, and that yeah. kind of stemmed my like true crime fascination, but I think it, a lot of it is like, um, I mean, a survivor aspect of it. It's just like, why are people the way they are? Like what, what makes somebody feel like that they can murder someone mm-hmm. and like it's just like the whole like the mind and just i think it's everything how do you about crawl it. into a sick brain like that you know mm-hmm. and figure out this person just murdered the in such gruesome ways it's like mm-hmm. what shaped their psyche at a young age you know mm-hmm. i was actually watching this documentary today um and it was about these two young boys and i, I believe it was in 2006 they were 15 the documentary oh, i want to say it's called lost lives and it's about um it was on youtube i was streaming some youtube at the work Mm. Um, (laughs) here's my question do you two ever like how do you listen to podcasts and work at the same time actually work Um, i try to do that and i get so just like if i I have to do something that like requires a lot of brain power like i'll be listening to a podcast and be like okay i gotta go back a little bit i missed that who died you know, so, um, but anywho. Yeah, yeah same for me. I mean, I, I mean, I do, there'll be times where I have to pause it or I have to like, I can't like listen to it. But most of the time I, I plug away. Like I'll be listening to it. I can multitask. Yeah. Believe it or not, yeah. I can do it. So, uh, but anyways, this one was like uh, teenagers and there's video of them saying like, this is who we're going to kill. It's our classmate. Oh my God. Um, mm. She's going to die. This is it. And then they, so they're recording it on the way. There's these two boys and they literally just, they were hanging out with her. It was their friend. They were hanging out with her. They, her boyfriend was there. They were like, okay, we're going to a movie. But during this time while they were there, one of them snuck down to the basement, unlocked the basement door, left, quotation marks, but didn't really leave, waited for the boyfriend to leave, then snuck in through the basement and stabbed her to death and then recorded afterwards saying, we stabbed her. Oh my God, I can't believe it. This is real. We really did it. Like we stabbed her. And I mean, it's you just they were 16 years old and now hearing these guys talk now and they were just like, well, one of them seems remorseful and the other one, his parents are being completely like uh, enabling him and saying like, oh, they're lumping you in together with this other boy and you're not like him. You're a good boy. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, no, you murdered. Um, no, you're, you're not. You murdered your friend. And you're not a good boy. That's how it started. And planned Honestly. it. You know, it's like I feel like sometimes when people are just coddled forever. Yeah. I mean, it's like 
sometimes to be expected that you're just going to be a D-bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're still coddling See, him, and that's the worst. Yeah. Like, I got to go more for the survivor stories because yeah. I feel that gives me hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if anybody yeah. ever attacked me, I feel like, dang it, I want to live through it. Yeah. Learn from Absolutely. what they did. And have a great story to tell. Right. I just like just respect them so much because it's like how do you go on you know because yeah. it's like sometimes mm-hmm. you get bogged down yep. with just the day-to-day shit that just sucks yeah and it's like oh it's just so humbling mm-hmm. you know to be like wow you know I'm you did it about nothing yeah and you marry vincent you uh, have no arms yeah. yeah you know it's like that's just insane to me i can't mm-hmm. imagine Ugh. agreed Ugh. agreed Oh, so much shit in the world. I Well, I like the, I do like the unsolved ones until like we kind of get to the end and then I'm like, then I get frustrated. I'm like, oh, yeah. I want to know what happened. Oh, yeah. It's killing me. Uh, well, that's like, have you guys ever watched the ID show like Disappeared? I was just going to say that. I was going to say <laughs> Joanna and I hate Disappeared because they just disappeared and you never find out what happens. Uh, it's, what's sad to me is it's like, okay, we're so bothered by not having an answer their families yeah. like oh, mm-hmm. i'm yeah. thinking about it you know and it's like oh i just can't imagine mm-hmm. no like the mara murray that oh. one that case oh. kills me and that documentary is coming out very soon um so uh, with our comcast that we got we have like oxygen right now which is awesome but they're doing that mara murray thing did you watch it no not yet i don't think it's out yet is it mic yeah, in no, front of your had... face there rookie <laughs> When you talk, put the mic in front of your face. Me? Yeah. Well, we've got Ashley and Joanna sharing sharing a mic. mic. I'm so So. sorry if I'm muffled every now and again. But no, they had part one. And it was was pretty awesome. But there's this guy, like a true crime author, who thinks that it's like her dad had something to do with it. And I don't believe that at all. But it was was kind of interesting. Interesting? Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, So bottom line, it's a weird subject. To be yeah. fascinated by right. when you think of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I like, it, and going back to my favorite murder and the things they discuss it, it, one of my favorite little quotes that has come out of that is, fuck politeness. Mm-hmm. And That's I... That's so true. I am just so polite, and yeah. I've grown up being so polite to people and and creepy guys coming up. We just had yeah. an incident in a neighborhood nearby with my friends, And um, this guy came, he just came walking into her garage. Her garage door was open and she was taking a dirty diaper or whatever out to the garage. And this guy kind of comes in. He's like a 19 year old guy and he's talking to her and she's like, you need to leave now. My husband's right in there. And I was like, was he? She's like, yes, thankfully he was. Yeah. But he's like, oh, what? Am I creeping you out? You know, like he was being really weird. And mm. and then he left. She did call the police and, and just let him know that this happened. And then a few days later, in the morning, uh, you know, the moms are walking the kids to the bus stop and whatnot. And he's wandering around the neighborhood. And he tried. He went up to this lady's house and she had opened the door and he was trying to push his way <gasps> into her house. Oh, no. She slammed the door. Uh, one of my friends was in the car um out front of the bus stop and she's calling nine she's like i'm on the phone with the police she's like get away from my car you know because he kept kind of wandering over took him like 15 minutes to get there well thankfully in the interim the school bus did come like you know you you don't know is this guy really a danger is he just weird what's going Uh, on that's beyond weird i don't i don't definitely that's too much which i was like why was everyone still standing at the bus stop i was really confused on that anyway um so the kids got in the bus and left, and then finally the cops get there, and, and the guy actually lived right there in the neighborhood. So the cops come up to the door, right. and he takes off running, and the cops are chasing him. And then some of my friends who were still at the bus stop, they start running. And then <laughs> my friend Laura said she heard this really loud pop. And so she's like, duck! And she like <laughs> fell down. <laughs> and well, it turned out it was a taser. So the oh. cop had shot him with a taser. I didn't. I didn't know they sounded like a big old pop. I've like never that. heard that. Yeah. Well, she's never heard a gunshot. I don't think so. Um. So she. So they take off running. They and he. The guy was still running. Finally, the cops catch him, and he's had. He's got like a huge list of priors, all this stuff. Ugh. But it. It just makes you think. I, I'm trying to teach my daughter. I've always taught my daughter to be so polite. Well, now she's 16, and I'm yeah. like, you don't need to be polite. <laughs> so I'm not it's trying hard. to change it. <laughs> yeah, that is that is one thing uh-huh. that is hard. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I know even like, I mean, Joanna and I both experienced it working at Big B as being like young women yes. between the ages of 18 and like 25. Yes. That like, you, 
as that at the job and just as people, we have to be nice every single day to yeah. every single customer. And some men, some creepy old men, think that the we're being nice to them because we like them yeah. in a way that's more than what we yeah. do. And that they think that that's an invitation for them to flirt with us and say inappropriate things to us. And I can't tell you how many times. And I mean, part of that is that it was our job and I didn't feel like I was able to, you know, I wasn't able to like defend myself and say, that's not right. You can't say that to me because I'm like, oh, it's a customer. I can't, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and I think I'm that's, I think that's mm-hmm. terrible that like we felt that way some of the time i know like i mean well because lots then, of instances. Then they, well maybe he didn't mean it that way mm-hmm, kicks right. in like well and i just remember like the thing that would bother me the most about working at big b and you're probably already gonna know what i'm gonna say is i remember people would always badger you about like are you even old enough to work here oh, when you'd say like oh yeah i'm 20 they'd be like then they'd flirt with you and i'm like you're a creep yeah. mm-hmm. like i don't know it's just yeah and that well there was times when they when like once I said how old I was, that I was over the age of 16 or 17, that they didn't like me anymore yes. because they thought I was younger and they were more interested in me if they thought I was underage. Oh, yeah. okay. And then when That's they find, just, and then when they ugh. found out I was not, then they were like, oh, I don't care about you anymore. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. yeah. And just being outrightly like just inappropriate that they thought it was OK that they could say that. And that's just it's not OK. It's, it's not, not okay. OK. And that and I think like podcasts like my favorite murder and, and other podcasts that are empowering women yeah. are great for like giving you a stance to say like, you know what you can say, that's not okay. You can say, don't say that to me. Mm-hmm. And honestly, if your work tells you, no, you're not okay to say that, screw them, mm-hmm. then quit because right. it's not worth it. It's not yeah. worth your life. It's not worth your, you know, your just, you know, um, just coffee shop, creepy story, not us, but I had a girlfriend who worked at like a ma and pa like coffee shop Mm -hmm. and, um, she had gotten there five 30 in the morning, six, whatever dark out still. And when she got there, she realized the door was unlocked and she was like, Oh, this is creepy. Like, I don't really know what's going on. And then she got there and she was like getting things around and she went in the back and there was a guy back there. (gasps) Yeah. I guess he was there like the night before to repair. Like, I don't know if it was the espresso machine or the fridge or something, but she, freaked out obviously you know i mean it's like because my instant thought was why like you you have bad intentions you know and it's like maybe that's just the way my brain goes because sometimes i feel like assuming the worst puts you more like protection mode you know where it's like that's just i would rather have my guard up than down in that situation but Mm. i mean everything ended up being fine he left but holy shit yeah worst nightmare Ugh. Ugh. yeah that's creepy Mm -hmm. Ugh. Hmm. Well, I was going to say um, back to what Ashley was saying earlier about when the when they would find out she was older. Uh, you look very young. Mm-hmm. You're very young looking. So, I mean, even now you can pass for a teenager. Mm-hmm. And to me, yeah, I when we were we worked together, uh, I would you know guys would be hitting on her guys. I, men would be saying very and I was things, seventeen at the time, not even yeah, knowing. I wasn't like assuming, but you didn't look. You even looked. You could have looked no, 14. No, I'm sure I did. I'm sure I looked yes. really, really young. Yeah. So that's the yeah. thing. Like, they're they're like being inappropriate thinking. They must be thinking you're even younger than that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing is most people don't. I mean, just me personally, and I'm sure this happens to other, other women too, mm-hmm. but that like you probably don't know how old I am until you start talking to me, until yeah. you mm-hmm. realize and you hear me talk that I am older than I look. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is, it's always kind of like, unsettling when somebody approaches you you know and talks to you thinking that you're a teenager oh, and mm-hmm. are hitting on you and then mm-hmm. you are not a teenager and then they're like oh, never mind mm-hmm. yeah mm. so so fuck politeness yeah moral of the story exactly. fuck yes. politeness. bottom line <laughs> yes. yep someone oh approaches gosh. you you don't feel confident you don't you don't you get the bad vibe Walk away, flip them off, walk away, scream, yep. run away, whatever mm-hmm. you got to do. And don't park next to any minivans. Oh, never. That's no. Me. And that's if they're parked so next true. to you yeah. when you come out. Get, oh, yeah. so my daughter, yeah. who's 16, she works at a restaurant. She got a job there and she'll sometimes, you know, be there late yeah. and it's dark and it's in a plaza. So she'll walk out to the car mm-hmm. after work. And and we said, is it a policy where somebody walks you to your car or yeah. at least stands there and watches you get to your car? And she's like, no, I don't think so. And Should and be. I'm like, no, that needs to be a policy. And, yeah. and we frequent that restaurant a lot. And and I we even talked to a few of the, you know, manager there, some of the people there. And 
um, I said, you guys, you know, when my daughter's working anyway, you guys exactly. better be making sure she gets to her car. Uh, so, I mean, any restaurant I had ever worked in, which I worked in, you know, that mm-hmm. was my thing for a lot of years. Um, you always had somebody walking you, you out no, to your yeah, car. Always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was always the bouncer's job. That was the job. policy. Yeah. If they didn't, you'd get in trouble. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think that it's safe to say too that like you always should be proactive and not reactive, you know, because it's mm-hmm. like I mean, exactly. it's sometimes it's gonna be yep. too late, you know. So I mean, because I feel like sometimes you know my boyfriend will say like you're nuts, you know, but it's like, but I'm not getting murdered, mm-hmm. exactly. Not today, yeah, uh, not, today. not today, not yeah. today. Like that, yeah, yep. yeah. Well. Ladies, Joanna, thank you so much. Yes. That was so fun. Um, please have me again. My oh, drink was amazing. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. I it was simple, but I felt yeah. like it really spoke to murders, yes. whiskey. And Maybe yeah. we can have like a follow up, like my favorite murder. Yeah. I think we definitely up show. Yes. do that. I am yep. so excited for the show. It's gonna be amazing, and I'm so excited for that for them to see the gift that Joanna's gonna make. Mm-hmm. Like I said. It's very team fun. effort, guys. Mm-hmm. Team, it's effort. A team effort. Definitely. Always. Looking Always. forward to it. All right. Well, it's been fun having one you. One more. Oh, thanks again, you guys. Again. One more yep. little cheers here. Yeah. Right. Yay. 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 Here we go. Yay. Cheers. cheers.